Howdy folks! Welcome to our brand new episode of the Compression Vlog. This is our brand new weekly series that we upload every Tuesday right here to the Compression Network where we debate all kinds of things like current events, political stuff, car related stuff, you name it. So subscribe and stay tuned for more on the Compression Network for more videos. And now you can follow us on Instagram for cool behind the scenes looks at the random shenanigans and happenings that we get into right here on the Compression Network. So subscribe, follow, and stay tuned. We've got more for you in the future. On today's episode, folks, we're talking about one of my particular favorite subjects, millennials. No, I'm not talking about how easily offended they are. Nope, today we are instead talking about millennials and the future of antique and classic cars. Yes, this is something that I heard, uh, it's been popping up recently on multiple news outlets. I can't really pinpoint one. Uh, I've seen it in Hemmings, I've seen it in Car and Driver, I've, I think Road and Track, a handful of different articles that I've read pointing out the fact that millennials and interest in cars are a lot different these days than what their, you know, their parents and their grandparents were. And I completely agree with that. So today we are going to be exploring what it is that makes millennials tick in regards to cars and really, what is the future of the antique car culture like? They're everywhere! All right, first of all, millennials and cars in general. Now, this is something that probably follows a lot more stereotypes than what's necessary, but I'm sure you can picture it, the kid in their 20s that's either fascinated by their dad's old El Camino or by the, the guy with the Honda Civic down the street. That sort of thing, you know, the cars that are, okay, the El Camino is kind of cool, but the cars that are not really attractive. The idea is, is that a car from the 90s cannot be considered a classic car. A car from the 90s, yes, can be considered a classic at this point, in my personal opinion. And this is kind of where this whole thing comes up. Millennials, in regards to their taste in cars, it's usually shaped by their parents and sometimes by their grandparents. You know, they like the stories that their dad tells them about him ripping up and down the streets in his Camaro, or, you know, they like the stories that their grandfather tells them when, you know, oh, I remember when I got my first Lincoln. Something weird like that. That's usually what ticks the box and gets someone interested in car culture in general. It's how I got started in cars. My dad's old stories about his old days with hot rods back in the 80s, when he had his old Camaro Z28, when he had his Mustang Cobra, stuff like that. That's what really ticked my interest in cars and as a result some of the cars that he talked about I will admit I'm I find very desirable cars that are unusual for example again his prized and enjoyable 1977 Ford Mustang Cobra 2 most folks despise the Mustang 2 they say it's the disgusting it's the stallion that never was in my opinion it's one of the most desirable and best looking Mustangs ever made I think they're really cool looking and if you know how to build them, they can turn into some seriously fantastic hot rods. And this is where that whole debate comes in. Where is the future of the automobile industry going? In my opinion, I feel like the antique car uh, business, the trade, if you will, this whole idea that you can sell a Duesenberg for $400,000 at auction, I think that will see a very sharp decline probably in the next 10 to 20 years. Most people my age probably don't even know what a Duesenberg is, let alone how to pronounce it. They probably don't care enough about it to spend half a million dollars on it should they even have half a million dollars to spend on it. I feel like the classic car culture is going to be completely reset that cars that we consider today to not really be classics will become classics. The prices on them will go up, but they're going to teeter off just a little bit for the simple reason that going by millennials today at least, most of us don't really have the kind of disposable income to throw 50 grand at a car simply because it's a car. A lot of us want cars that are simply cheaper easier to acquire, easier to insure, and easier to maintain. Now, of course, there will be exceptions to that rule. You will have the young, affluent Americans that want to buy the very expensive cars because their grandfather talked about how their grandfather had one. The majority of it, I feel, will be people like me that enjoy cars that are a little bit cheaper and a little bit more modern. For example, the uh, Pontiac Trans Am, the fourth generation Pontiac Trans Am in the uh, late 90s to early 2000s. In my opinion, beautiful, classic muscle car at this point. 
a lot of people still consider them to be fairly modern. I actually disagree with that. To me, they're a little old school looking now because they got the pop-up headlamps. And I think just because I remember seeing them running around back when I was younger. But I see cars like that becoming very desirable to people our age. And right now, Pontiac Trans Am prices are going up. It's very difficult to find an example for under $10,000. If you want to spend more, especially if you're talking about the final year uh, special edition model, it will probably set you back about $30,000. They're not cheap. But I see cars like that consider being considered more desirable, not only because of their lower price point, but also because people our age saw them when we were younger and want them now. I also see cars that are a little less conventional being considered cool, and this is in the very long term. Cars like the Scion TC. Frankly, I don't like Scions. I think they're stupid. I think it was just a big marketing ploy, and it worked, granted. I do know people that love their Scions. They love them for how easy they are to maintain. They love them for the gas mileage. They love them for how fun that they are to drive. I see that as a very good potential thing in the future that Scion TCs and maybe even the Scion XD or whatever that big toaster thing was. I see that in the future they will become classic collector items that millennials will find them very desirable and want them. I see a major shift in the market happening. That's basically what I'm saying here. There will be big changes in the market, not necessarily for the bad, but cars today that are worth millions of dollars a couple years from now probably won't be worth that much unless you're someone like me who is very educated on those cars what they mean to motorsports and what they mean to the automotive world as a whole like for instance the tucker 48 i don't think i'll ever not be a tucker fan that being said most people i know have never heard of them and that's why you'll probably see the value kind of start to teeter off here probably in the next 10 to 20 years anyway folks that's just my opinion on the subject of course this is where y'all come in like, comment, subscribe, most importantly, comment down below. Let us know your opinions on it. What's more, we have ourselves, yes, this is new, a brand new Instagram profile. So if you're interested, there's a link in the description. You can follow our Instagram page and get really cool behind the scenes look at all the stupid shenanigans we got going on behind the scenes here at the Compression Network. I'll see you all on the flip side.